Aloha guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, tonight's video, we're actually gonna talk about food allergies and traveling. And I get it, if you don't have food allergies, maybe you don't wanna watch this video, but it might actually be helpful because you never know down the line if you're gonna come across someone who does have food allergies. And you know what, being prepared is really just what's best when it comes to both food allergies and traveling. So in tonight's video, we're gonna talk about my top five tips for traveling with food allergies or dietary concerns. Now this is not a Disney specific video, which is why I'm not wearing mouse ears tonight. Uh, this is an in general traveling video. So the fact is, is this all came about due to an upcoming adventure I am gonna have with a bunch of eighth graders and DC, Washington DC. I am embarking on becoming a chaperone for a group of six girls, including my own daughter, um, as a bunch of eighth graders go and explore DC. And I'm kind of been put in this odd situation of where I'm going on vacation, I'm going on a trip, but I have zero control. I have zero control. No car, no ability to do anything. I don't get to make any decisions. They're basically gonna just send us to museums and we go and explore. I have no way of changing or controlling the situation, which when you have food allergies, that kind of, well, it becomes an issue, right? So I did what any good mom would do, and I started calling companies and facilities and trying to figure this all out. And what came up was, is basically, we have too many food allergies or issues, and they actually suggested we just cancel and they're gonna refund our money. Um, that was a week before the trip. Are you kidding me? They basically said they can't accommodate me. They cannot give me the information I need so that I can be safe. They basically said, without hurting my feelings, or so she said, is that the tour guides and whatnot aren't gonna care about me and my daughter. They're not gonna care about our food allergies. So unless we can figure it out all on our own, we should probably just cancel. After months and months and months of planning. So, without going down that rabbit hole, which really just, that's what brought up this video. I actually realized, yeah, that this info might be needed. I especially got concerned because my daughter isn't the only kid in the school with food allergies. There were a lot of parents at these meetings concerned for kids with dietary concerns and food allergies, and I don't think any of them did the research I did. I don't think anyone are prepared the way I am. So again, that is the point of this video. We're gonna talk about the five top things you should really do and prepare and know about when traveling with food allergies. And this is whether you're going as a family, if you're going as just an adult, or if you're in the situation like me and you're sending those kiddos off to school or some sort of you know field trip or situation, these are the things you should be prepared for. All right, makes sense? So the first thing of course is kind of easy, medicine. 100% pack those meds, right? So I'm not just talking about EpiPen or AviQ, but of course, if you have them, yes, you have to pack them. But other situations that may be in your medical action plan, does your plan specifically say you should take Benadryl in case of a certain situation? Or should you just make sure you have your regular allergy meds to kind of hopefully you prevent some sort of attack. Whatever your action plan is, go by what you and your doctor have decided, but you need to pack those meds for your family, for you, for that kiddo. Don't forget about that inhaler. You never know when a situation's gonna come up and you might have to use it. Be prepared and pack it. Also, if you're sending the kids alone solo, you need to pack with instructions not just instructions on how to use the meds, but when to use the meds. If your kid is having an anaphylactic situation and the parents and the other kids around don't know what that is and they don't know what to do and to how to help your child, yeah, this is where that information is gonna become useful. I'm not saying you have to use this for your EpiPen, but the nice thing about this one is there's a little pocket in the back that we would actually stick instructions inside along with some Benadryl tablets. 
so that everything that my kids kind of needed in case they were going off on a school field trip was all in this case. It's just an example, but you definitely want to be prepared with all the medicines, the epis, the allergy pills, the asthma, and instructions, right? So the next thing up is wipes. Now I've talked about this in my other travel videos before, but wipes are very important. And I'm not talking just for sanitizing, right? For sanitizing your hands. I'm talking for surfaces. Food surfaces go and stay for a long time, even if you can't see it. If you're allergic to dairy and someone just ate pizza on that table and someone didn't sanitize that table properly, that person could end up with hives on their fingers. It's just an example. You want to pack those wipes. And I get it as the kiddo, they might not want to be walking around with a bunch of wipes and you know making super obvious of themselves. But just note, these are the two situations here. Uh, so wet ones have been known to uh, remove food proteins and food protein particles off surfaces. So you're more likely gonna be able to clean that surface, save for a food allergy, with wet ones. Now I absolutely love this car-like size because it fits in the side of a backpack. We keep one in every single seat or row within the car. We take them on the airplane. But if you need something a little inconspicuous, yeah, they make them in like little packages too. You know, I think you get 10 or 15 in here. I put them in a Ziploc baggie so they don't dry out, but between the car container and this container, having wipes to wipe down those surfaces is key. Airplanes, tables, chairs, anywhere you could be eating, wipe down those surfaces. In some hotel rooms, if you're a little worried that maybe they didn't clean like they should have, go ahead and wipe down the surfaces on that hotel room too. It's really not gonna hurt you, it's really just gonna help you. So I pack these wipes everywhere we go. I keep them in my purse because you just never know. Number three on the list is of course allergy or chef cards, we're gonna talk about it, medical or insurance cards, and some form of ID, right? You, this is just important stuff. So the first thing of course are allergy cards. 100% will not go anywhere without my allergy card. In fact, my allergy card is also a chef card. Let me explain. This is an example, obviously it's not my personal one, uh, but this is a card that's gonna explain all of your allergies, not to mention a few more uh, bits and pieces of information here. So it's very important to make for not only the chef or someone who's gonna be making your food, but other people in your party to be aware of what your food issues are, right? So what we got on here is obviously the name, and we've got a picture to go with the name, especially in my situation, 400 random kids, it's probably gonna be helpful for the person cooking the food to know which one is me, which one is my daughter. Same thing in if, if an emergency happens, right? Who is this kiddo that this card belongs to? So make sure you have a picture and of course their name. You wanna make sure you carefully list their allergies, which ones are actual allergies, right? Anaphylactic allergies and sometimes you have to go a little further to explain you can't just say i'm allergic to dairy sometimes you have to break it down that means whey and cream and cheese i can't tell you how many people think dairy and eggs are the same thing can't tell you how many times i'm sure you've experienced it where you say you're gluten-free and they're like well we don't have any nuts in the product i didn't ask about nuts i asked about gluten so this is a 100 helpful for that, you wanna list all of your allergies. And then you also wanna notate anything that you avoid or you're sensitive to. That way they can try to avoid it and so you don't have to worry about it, but it's helpful to know which one is gonna be a serious anaphylactic situation and which one you're just avoiding for X, Y, and Z issues, right? Makes sense. So you definitely want that name, that picture, and a list of your allergies. You want to put down here what type of medical device you're carrying so they know what to look for. Are we looking for an Epi? Are we looking for an AviQ, right? And some sort of contact information. Obviously, this is for me. It has my business email on here, but you could put, you know, if, if this is your child's card, you could put your name, your phone number, your address. So the person who finds your child and or this card can put two and two together. Does that make sense? I absolutely love my allergy cards. Like I said, I use them when traveling. We, I use them when we go out to restaurants. Any form of situation where someone's gonna be cooking our food, I definitely bring this. But then I use it anyway. You never know when you're just at a mall and something bad happens, right? Just, it could happen anywhere. Absolutely love these. Now, what you can do is on the back, Add your medical action plan. Not everyone knows what to look for. Not everyone knows that you need to have 
two to three symptoms at a time before you epi. Not everyone knows when you epi versus when you use Benadryl versus when you call emergency, right? So explain that in here, list it on the back. Look for hives, tummy trouble, vomiting, fever, redness, whatever the situation is, put your medical action plan on the back. So it becomes a medical card, an allergy card, and a chef card in one. Now, mine are four by six size, so like the size of a photo. I actually laminate mine. Why? Because that way if you take them to restaurants, you don't have to worry about spills, someone spilling their drink, or it, you know, it raining and getting wet in your backpack. These are perfect for Disney in any form of traveling. Absolutely love uh, my allergy chef card. Next thing up is gonna be the medical or insurance card. Yeah, this is kind of a given. If something happens, you have to go to urgent care, you have to go to the emergency room. Yeah, you're gonna need your insurance card. And you definitely need ID. This is whether you're traveling with your family, your, you know, your teenagers are traveling solo, or even those little kiddos. I remember when we would buy my kids' school picture package, it would come with a little ID card that we could also purchase with like their fingerprint on it and like their height and weight and that kind of information. That way, if you're in a situation and you, your kid kind of got lost, you can show that to someone real quick. You don't have to search your phone for a picture. You can actually show them the card, give it to the police, give it to whoever you need so we can find your kiddo, right? So those are the things most definitely, that allergy slash chef card, your insurance card, and some form of ID. When my kiddos were little, I would totally, you know, you can do those um, ID, like the tattoos with information. I would put my business card in all of their pockets. Everyone's backpack has an allergy card. I was putting ID information in as many places as possible. But the fourth thing is food, right? We are talking about food allergies here, so food. But we really need to know is where and how. Where are we getting the food? How are we getting the food? Now this issue is of special concern for me right now with this DC trip because again, it's a group tour. It is not something I have any control over and they're dealing with 400 other people. I am, I am just not important. I am not getting any form of special accommodations, which means I have to figure it out. I have to figure out how I'm gonna have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for three days in a strange city, in a strange state, with access to no car or any ability to cook. I have to figure this out for two people, right? And we deal with over 24 different food allergies. So yeah, you can uh, see my panic here. So this is where it comes down to. First, how are we gonna eat, right? Are we gonna pack food? pack snacks, are we gonna order groceries, whether through Amazon, Instacart, Walmart, Target, any form of food delivery service here? Um, are we gonna have a fridge? Am I gonna have the ability to keep certain things cold? Will I have a microwave, access to a microwave so maybe I can cook something? Or maybe I'm lucky and I'll have a kitchenette and I actually have space to kinda cook something and make sandwiches and stuff like that. These are things that are good to know. So in my case, uh, I had to call and beg and plead for them to put a refrigerator in my room. So let's hope I'm actually getting a refrigerator. Um, I did find out that they do have a microwave in the common areas. Yeah, not always safe. So make sure if that's a situation, you bring those wipes, you can wipe down that microwave, right? Just because it's in the common area, doesn't mean it's clean, right? The next thing we have to do is I had to research all dining locations. I had to figure out where the heck the tour is gonna feed us, right? Where are we gonna have breakfast? Where are we gonna have lunch? Where are we gonna have dinner? So in our situation, we're having breakfast at the hotel. So I had to call the hotel and figure out what the continental breakfast was gonna be, if it could accommodate, what on earth on this continental breakfast we can eat. Turns out lunch is gonna be, uh, you know, fly by the seat of your pants. They don't know where they're gonna put us at lunchtime. There could be random food carts and McDonald's. They're not even sure, which tells me I can't rely on eating lunch anywhere. They did have two dinners specifically that they listed. So again, I had to research the restaurant, look at the menus, call the restaurant, and try to figure out if they have any food at these locations they can feed us. Makes sense, right?
And of course, with all of that planning, a week before the trip, we actually find out that all of this uh, so-called pre-planned dinners and breakfasts and things, they're not doing any accommodations. They're literally just giving us food and that's what we eat. The pizza place, they're just putting a bunch of pizzas on the table and hopefully we can eat one. Spaghetti, yeah, they're gonna put a bunch of noodle dishes on the table and hopefully we can eat one. So yeah, dinners for us, aren't looking very good. In fact, breakfast isn't looking very good either. I think it came down to possibly oatmeal, Cheerios, and a bagel. So yeah, not sure about that. But again, this is stuff we need to know so we can prepare, right? So if it helps, this is what we decided to do. Now again, I'm sharing this information so it helps you. Obviously, if I'm at Disney World, I don't have to worry about it. This DC trip is extra special. <laughs> because I didn't plan it and I have zero control. So anyway, this is what we decided to do. We decided to pack food and snacks, a large amount of food and snacks I'm gonna show you guys. Um, I found a local deli, which is actually inside our hotel, which is uber convenient, called and talked to the manager and they will be able to make us uh, sandwiches and salads that we can get you know, to go and I can put in the hotel refrigerator and we can just grab out as we need per day, take it with us on the tour. However, how am I gonna, get, how am I gonna keep this food cold, right? So that means I have to pack a cooler bag and Ziploc baggie so I can get ice so I can keep our food cold. Yeah, there's a lot going on with this trip. Um, like I said, dinner's gonna be a little tight because it's kind of buffet style, but again, that's why I'm bringing extra snacks. So we're hoping we can figure out breakfast between the oatmeal and the bagel and what I packed. Lunch is totally gonna be the sandwiches and salads the deli's gonna make us, and dinner's gonna be a who knows what situation, but we got lots of extra snacks just in case. So. For those of you curious what I'm actually gonna pack here, so we're gonna start with some protein shakes. Again, per our allergies, uh, these vegan shakes are perfect for us. It also gives us the perfect amount of protein. So throughout the day, we don't necessarily have to worry about where we're gonna get our protein. We just have to figure out how to fill our stomachs, right? So breakfast is gonna be protein shakes and then dry cereal and bagels, like I said. Then we've got lots, and I mean lots of granola bars and not the same type of granola bars. We are trying to mix it up here. So I've got some Kind bars here and some new uh, Costco bars here that we're gonna have um, as granola slash protein bars. We're also gonna have rice cakes, gluten-free crackers, and trail mix with nuts. And then I'm also packing microwavable rice. This is also from Costco. You peel the edge, 90 seconds, you have rice. Again, I said we have a microwave, a communal microwave. Yeah, if we get back and we're starving, we're eating rice. Yeah, we're, we're getting fancy here. And then I've got chocolate and cookies for my sanity here, dealing with the food allergies and the fact that I'm chaperoning six girls. Yeah, I'm gonna need me some chocolate. But that is what we're packing and we're gonna try to help this uh, work out. My fifth tip here is you need to do your location research. Now what I mean by this is depending on where you're traveling, Disney, domestic, international, wherever you're going, you do want to do some of this research. Disney's not necessarily as needed as other destinations, FYI, uh, but you want to research the closest hospital. It is kind of helpful to be able to tell the cab driver, take me here, right? So research how close the hospital is, urgent care, wherever you know you think is going to be best for you. Get the, num get the name, get the number, get the address, save it, put it somewhere. You're gonna to wanna to find out who the local cab company is or have a Lyft or Uber apps on your phone. Again, you need to go somewhere quick, you need to get food quick, you need to go to the ER quick, you're gonna want that information. You're gonna to wanna to find the local drugstore. I'm lucky, uh, one of our dinners has a Walgreens next door. So not only do, if I need you know medicine, I can go to that Walgreens, but that Walgreens is also a perfect place for me to get snacks uh, during that dinner meal if needed, but you wanna find a, a local drugstore. Also see if they have a delivery. I know Disney has this, which is super convenient, but yeah, if you can't get yourself to a drugstore, find one that will deliver those meds. And dining, as I kind of mentioned above, you definitely wanna research your favorite locations. If you can eat, for example, at a Chipotle, you wanna research if there's Chipotles in the area of where you're going. If you can eat at McDonald's or Wendy's or Taco Bell, something a little bit more familiar, you wanna research that ahead of time. You wanna know where it is. Screen save the address, have that information. 
That way, if needed, you can definitely get to that location. Luckily for our situation, I found out there's a Chipotle less than 0.2 miles away. I can walk to it. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna have the ability to walk to it uh, because of the times of our tour. We leave at 9 a.m. We don't get back till 10.30 p.m. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the benefit of going to Chipotle, but knowing that it's there, if there is an emergency, is making me feel better about it, right? Also knowing there's a Dunkin' Donuts nearby, there's a Trader, Joe's nearby, and like I said, there's that Walgreens next to where our dinner is. So things like that make me feel a little better about the situation. I know there's a Panera not too far away if I need to also order Panera, right? These are the things that are helpful. Next, you wanna search airport. If you're flying, you wanna research the airport you're flying from or flying to if you're not familiar. You wanna see if there's any dining venues inside the airport that you can eat at because oftentimes you can't go through the airport with certain types of food, especially liquids. But if you buy it at the airport, usually it's fine. You can take it on the airplane and you can eat it. So oftentimes, if I don't have time in the morning to pack us a lunch or a sandwich while we're flying, I will go to one of those restaurants if it's one that's safe for us to order the food. So knowing which uh, dining locations are at which airports are really helpful. Again, my situation, I found out there's a Chipotle, again Chipotle, at one of our dining locations and there's a Burger King at the other. We don't really eat a lot of Burger King, but I know I can get French fries if needed. And sometimes if I packed a boring sandwich, if I can just get my daughter French fries, she's usually happy at that point. Uh, hotel, so you wanna research your hotel. You wanna see if there's dining inside the hotel or if there's dining nearby. You wanna figure out these things, again, in case of an emergency. Again, that deli being inside our hotel was a huge benefit to me. Uh, there's also a Starbucks. Starbucks can't really feed me, but again, if I need to survive with a pink drink, I know I can go to Starbucks. But yes, knowing these things are nearby because I did the research, is just gonna make me feel better about the situation. And that means if an emergency happens where we're starved and we can't get food, I know where to go, I know who to call. If someone has you know, an EpiPen emergency, I know the hospitals, I know the urgent cares, I have the names and the numbers, right? This is just kind of general research that is helpful to have. But really, the biggest deal is you just need to be prepared. And like I said, I am prepared. My daughter will be prepared. She's lucky I'm going with her. She's gonna have a great time and I will be nearby in case anything happens. I feel bad for the other kids. I am hoping their parents are as well planned as I am because I think I'm the only one who called the hotel. I know I'm the only one who called the tour company. I'm the only one who knows kind of this information. And yeah, there was no way the daughter and I were gonna be able to eat whatever pasta they put in front of us for buffet style. No way in heck, my daughter's gluten-free. Pasta, yeah, unless that pasta is gluten-free, it's not gonna work out for us. So yeah, just knowing these things in advance. In fact, I was a little shocked, and this is just something you guys should know. One of the parents at one of the meetings raised her hand and asked a very important question. She said, will I know if any of the kids that I am chaperoning have a medical condition, have an EpiPen, have a food allergy? Excellent question. The coordinator says, no, not really that he has 400 kids to maintain and look at, and you know the, the, the lead teacher on the bus might have that information. And if one of the chaperones is, you know, is concerned and wants to know, ask, but really it's up to the child. So I'm telling you, as a parent, make sure your child is prepared. Make sure your child has that allergy card. Make sure your child has all the snacks. Make sure your medical treatment plan is on the back. Because that chaperone, might not know what to do. I cannot believe we are not, as chaperones, going to be given uh, medical information for the, the, you know, the kids in our charge, right? I get due to HIPAA laws and stuff, we can't spread all this information. But at some point, I do need to know if someone in my group has a medical situation that I have to be aware of. So it's going to be your responsibility in a lot of these cases for you to share that information, for you to say, just so you know, I'm allergic to this. I have this card that explains everything and I keep my EpiPen here. You might just have to do that depending on your situation. I, I was a little shocked, to be honest, about the lack of accommodation going on with this tour group. But again, I didn't book it and it's not Disney. 
and this is just what happens. So we are working through it. We are prepared. I've got the snacks, the medicine. I've got all the numbers and the addresses and all that stuff. So I think I'm good to go. But yes, again, if you are traveling with food allergies or any dietary concerns, key here, be prepared. Be overly prepared. It is really, really hard to wing it with food allergies. Unless you have all of this at your disposal, you really can't do that. I am hoping to look like I'm winging it when I'm there, but I'm not. I've called the people, I've gotten the names, I've packed the stuff, I've prepared. So yeah, that is how I travel with food allergies. I will tell you most definitely when I travel for work, my coworkers 100% know where my epi is. I have one, uh, whoever I'm staying with in the room, I will tell her, I will say, this is my allergy card, nice and updated. The EpiPen's in that backpack. So they know, just in case, they know, considering me, I might pop an allergy pill in first before I Epi, depending on my symptoms. Again, it's different for each person, and I think that's the issue. If you are not versed in food allergies, you might not be aware of the symptoms to look for. Which, which symptoms come first? Which symptoms are worse? The fact that you might need to, once you've got two or three symptoms at one time, that you probably need to epi and go to the emergency room. People aren't versed in this like we are, right? So you need to give them that information. You need to put that information somewhere so if someone finds it, they can help you out. So yeah, I think that's just the biggest takeaway, guys. Be prepared. You can't really wing it. You can look like you're winging it, but you're not really, you didn't really wing it. When I go to Disney, I might look like I'm winging it, but that's years and years and years of food aller allergy research that I have done so that I can so-called wing it while on vacation. But yeah, guys, this is my tips and tricks. Top five things to do and be prepared for when traveling with food allergies. I hope this video helped you out. Again, if you don't have food allergies, I hope it helped you at least realize you know, how to help someone who has food allergies or how to uh, be prepared if you are chaperoning someone with food allergies, but yeah. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications, like this video, and comment. Now, this was just five. I have lots of tips and tricks for traveling with food allergies, but I did have to narrow it down a little bit. But if you are someone who has food allergies and you have a tip or something you always do, put it in the comments. I would absolutely love to hear about it. And again, guys, this wasn't Disney specific. I am doing a lot of work for this DC trip purely because I have zero control. I have zero information of where we're going and when. And that puts me kind of in a weak spot. If this was a trip I booked and I know exactly where meals were going and when we're going and all those kinds of things, I could prepare a little bit better, probably be a little bit more calm about it. But life is life. Things happen and you just have to plan ahead. So anyway, guys, as always, mahalo for watching. Nina out.